Good morning. <laughs> I'm Daphne Williams. So let's get on it. You ready? I am a second grade teacher in Atlanta, and I also write curriculum for EL Education. I need a volunteer to read our learning target. I do this work to give all children access to literacy. It's their civil right. Every day in school, I see students leverage their literacy to express their unique genius and begin building the communities of their most courageous dreams to make sure all students get that opportunity. I have to apply the best research available to my teaching and my curriculum design. That's the science of reading. Amari, go ahead and read the first sentence. Science of Reading is an interdisciplinary body of scientifically based research about how we learn to read effectively. Mmm, let's blend it. Then. We call it science because it's the only proven way to ensure students become proficient readers and confident learners. Titus, what did you notice? This research has been conducted over the last five decades across the world and is derived from thousands of studies. No, that's not there's a body of evidence that informs how proficient reading and writing develop, why some have difficulty, and how we can most effectively assess and teach. And how we can get equitable student outcomes through prevention of and intervention for reading difficulties. I looked at the information again, or sometimes I had to retest because to understand the science of reading, we have to see how it works in curriculum and classrooms. My fellow curriculum designers have built these elements into the EL Education Language Arts curriculum. I can read one and two syllable words. EL has both a reading foundation skills block in grades K-2 and also content-based literacy modules in grades K-8. Because we have both, we hit all of the big five, phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. Art, work. Do we hear A or A? No. We hear R. Everybody give me that sound that we hear. The skills block is key to my student success. What that looks like in my classroom at Hollis is planning instruction based on assessment. So let's talk about it instructional practices that give students the opportunity to hear and say words. Go for it. Direct explicit instruction on cracking the alphabetic code. So we have P, R. And lots of practice with taught skills to build fluency. The learning comes to life in our classrooms. Students strengthen their orthographic mapping, which is students hearing a sound and matching the letters that make that sound through multi-sensory techniques, such as movement and music. B-I-R-D, now we write them down. Let's see how this plays out in Jenny Alahi's class in Rochester, New York. Information comes into the body and it comes to the foundational senses. And those are the senses of proprioception, vestibular sense, and the tactile sense. And essentially those are the senses of movement and balance. But if the information coming up through the brain is not regulated or isn't efficient, we're not getting to the part of the brain where self-regulation happens. It really can't get there until the lower foundational senses are satisfied or organized. What's the first word in my sentence? Will. My first word is will. Let's go ahead and write it, feather fingers. You can see how this is brain-based. It gets results and it's also joyful. And that's important too. Rigor and joy inspire students as they power through four phases of literacy development. And the rigor and joy doesn't stop there. In the content-based literacy modules, students work with engaging culturally relevant topics and texts. For example, Fifth graders in Detroit have been reading and writing about human rights for several weeks. A lot of the work that was structured for the curriculum was around Article 2, but what we wanted to also do was to help the students to make the connection between Article 2 and the literary text so they can see how it all works together. 
having that close read gives them that opportunity to bounce ideas off of each other. Um, that's really important for students to make sure that they're doing that read, think, talk, write cycle. Everybody have paid equal pay for equal work, so nobody's different like other people. You can see how building content knowledge about human rights is building these students' vocabulary development, reading fluency, and comprehension. When Detroit students were tested on these skills, they showed remarkable improvements. What does it say? Students in my school made the most of a science-based curriculum, too. High five! <laughs> It's one of the reasons Ed Reports gives all green ratings to the EL curriculum and other science-based curriculum. The science of reading works. Y'all did so much better than me. As a teacher, I have to ensure all students have equitable access to direct, explicit reading instruction and skills. I'm passionate about the science of reading because foundational literacy skills unlock lifelong learning and the agency to shape one's life and world.